Hello and welcome to Boxing in Your Faith. My name is Joe Cortez, International Boxing Referee from Las Vegas, Nevada, the boxing capital of the world. Tonight we have none other than Kenny Bayless, who's been a top-notch referee for the last uh, 20 years. And it seemed like it was just yesterday when Kenny started refereeing because when I started working with Kenny, helping him out, showing him some pointers as a referee, it seemed like uh, maybe 10 years ago, but it's already been 20 years. And Kenny, but tell our viewers because a lot of viewers have been asking me, Joe, Kenny, before he became a referee, his face was very familiar, and it's just like Tony Lato and Jack Lazarus, because they see their face all the time. Where was your face so familiar? Tell the viewers what you were doing before becoming a referee. Well, I was uh, with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I was an inspector, and uh, I was an inspector for about seven years, and um, it was a job that I, that I really loved because it, it, it got me you know, very close with working with fighters back, back then, which was Sugar Ray Leonard and, and Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hearns, and it was just a job that I, that I really enjoyed. Now tell us a little bit about some of the incidents that occur while you were an inspector that the whole world said, wow, look what happened in boxing, and you were part of that history making. What was that, some of the events? Right. Well, I'll tell you one that was, was uh, very shocking, and it was a fight which was at the showboat hotel and I noticed that one of the fighters was uh, uh, protecting his ribs and, and as I watched closely he, he just continued to, to, to drop his guard to protect his ribs so when the round ended I went over to one of the fight doctors and I said doc you know watch that guy because something seems to be wrong well um, to make a long story short the doctor did do it who happened to be Flipper Mansky and um, when the bell rung, Flip got in the ring, uh, went up to the fighter and said, do you want to fight? And the fighter said, yeah, yeah, I want to fight. So Flip said that he went to touch his ribs and the fighter immediately pushed him away, didn't want him to touch his ribs. So, so Flip looked at the uh, referee, which who happened to be Davey Pearl, and said, stop the fight. Davey stopped the fight. They took the fighter to the hospital and had him examined. He had had a cracked rib, Joe that had punctured his spleen. Wow. And if that fight had to continue, it would have been a good possibility that that fight, that fight might have died. Wow. See, that's why as, as a referee sometimes, you know, we, we have uh, a, a job to perform in the ring as referees, as you well know, as a referee yourself now, but we have these inspectors that work in the corners. They're actually our eyes and ears yes, they are. if they're on the ball. I mean, sometimes uh, they'll see things like, last week I was refereeing a fight at the Mandalay Bay, and uh, and when one of the inspectors told me, uh, uh, Joe, uh, uh, the camera person obviously got two cameras, and one is on the apron, and then, you know, if the fighter goes over there, hits over there, the, 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 the photographer will pull back with one camera, but the other camera is there on the apron, and if that head, his head hit, yeah, that could be a really serious injury to the fighter. Yes. So that's why it's good sometimes, because sometimes we're moving around, we're not paying attention to everything, but our inspectors, uh, they really are on their toes, and I was really, I complimented him, I said, you know, you did really, uh, I commend him for the job well done because he was really on the ball. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, he was going, telling the corner man, clean up the water in the corner, and right. he would run over with the towel and wipe it off, or some right. ice would be there. Right. And so th these are the jobs that we, we have, we, when we have inspectors working with us hand in hand, which is great. That's why when we have a team of individuals, we have ringside doctors, we have inspectors, we have the commissioners, we have the judges, the referees, the timekeepers, everybody's whole team. But now, you as a referee, Kenny. Okay. I mean, tell us about some of the great fights that you've refereed in the last, let's say the last 10 years or so, some of the big name fighters that you've refereed. Well, I tell you, if I was to start backwards and go back to 2010, um, Mayweather, or I'm sorry, yeah, Mayweather and, uh, and Shane Mosley. Okay. And then if I was to go back from there, it would be Cotto when he fought uh, uh, Pacquiao. And then uh, before then, I might have been, I believe it was uh, Cotto and Margarita, and then De La Hoya and Mayweather, and uh, then De La Hoya and, uh, and Bernard Hopkins, um, uh, Eric uh, Morales, and, uh, and Juan Manuel Barrera. Barrera, I said that right, Barrera. But uh, yeah, those have been some of the, the, uh, uh, the high-profile fights uh, that, that I have... Uh, 
done over the years, and, and I am just thankful and, and blessed that uh, I've had the opportunity to do them. Well, let me tell you, Kenny, you've done a great job as a referee, and I'm very proud of you because you know, I've been working with you. And, yes. and when I see my protégés out there, get out there and do this, they shine. When they shine, it makes me feel like, wow, you know, this is what I want to see. Top-notch referees win a job. It may, I take a lot of pride in it because uh, we work hand in hand, and, yes. and when we get, we have seminars and we speak and we brainstorm about the different scenarios that may occur in the ring prior to our uh, working at that particular fight. Right. And we, that's one of the things that we do as referees. We'll sit down and we'll say, well, we know if a cut occurs, or if it's accidental, intentional, low blows, of a fight of slips, you know, crazy things like, like hey, what happened to a uh, to uh, uh, our dear friend uh, Mills Lanes, he was involved in the ear biting incident. The ear right. biting with Mike Tyson and right. Evander Holyfield's right. ear off. I mean, right. you have to be prepared for the under talking about the unexpected. Exactly. That was one of the biggest uh, events that has happened in, uh, as far as a flagrant foul. Yes. And boxing, and not only did he bite his ear once, he went for the second one. Exactly. You know? And uh, so, crazy thing, how about the fan man? Exactly. When the fan man, so referee, we have to be prepared for anything that can occur in boxing right. because you never know. You never know. It, 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 the lights go out, it can get pitch dark. What do you do? <laughs> uh, you know, then you let the fight continue. You can see them, but I mean, uh, you don't want nothing going wrong. So you got to call time and you got to, uh, you right. know, the fighters cannot be taken care of by the, attended by the cornermen. No water, right. no instruction, no Vaseline. Right. None of that. It's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that we tell these fighters in the dressing room prior to fighting because when we say, okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room, sometimes if it's, a, it's not a, a major fight, they don't show this on television. They don't show us referees to going back to the dressing room and instructing, instructing the, uh, the fighters and the cornermen of the, what we expect of them that night. Exactly. And one of the main things we tell the fighters is what, Kenny? Um, you know, safety is first. That, I mean, number one thing for us is your safety. So if, uh, you know, if we come over to your corner because we feel that you're taking a little too much, we're checking you out. We may even ask you. We may even look at you. But we're looking to protect your safety. Exactly. If safety is first and foremost. And secondary is then enforcing the rules. But, uh, you know, when we get involved in, in, in these fights, you know, one of the things that we do as referees uh, Kenny, as you well know, I always said, I, I very, I'm 100%, 150% this. Mental preparation is so mm -hmm. important. Being yes. focused, yeah. having your mind really focused on what you're going to be doing a couple of days prior to the fight, so you can go in there and you try to minimize your mistakes. We all make mistakes right. here or there, right. but we try to minimize our mistakes. Not that we have some mistakes occur that the fans don't even know about, but I know about, you know exactly. about, but we try to leave those stones unturned as referees, so we try to, 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 is do the best we can. But I always say, they put erasers on pencils, why? Because you make mistakes. There you go. You got the erasers. Yeah, but, but we try to minimize those mistakes <laughs> and uh, try to always raise the bar. And that's why we have seminars every year. We have two or three, four different seminars that we either attend or that we give ourselves right. to help other referees, to keep them on their toes, keep them sharp. It's a refresher course because we always try to raise the bar as referees. We always say, the day that you think you know it all, that's the day you got to pack it in. So I uh, feel that if we continue to uh, work with each other, with referees, and, and share our wisdom and knowledge with other referees that are coming up the ranks, we have to do this on a regular basis. Because I, that's why I get my reward of seeing a gentleman like Kenny Bayless climbing up the ranks, Tony Weeks, mm -hmm. Russell Mora, right. Mike Ortega, Benji Estevez, right. Mark Nelson. I mean, these are, these are about six guys right. that I've been working for for years. <laughs> exactly. And that's where I get my satisfaction knowing that, that we're trying to revolutionize refereeing with our skills and our mm -hmm. wisdom and, and techniques that, that they didn't use in the past. If you look some of those, at some of those fights from back in the, in the 40s and the, and the 50s, I mean, <laughs> you look at the referees and say, oh my God, those referees let those guys get hit, they go down, they let the fights go too long. See. As a referee, I can tell you one thing, Kenny, and mm -hmm. the fans probably never even picked up on it, but I don't referee today the same way I started refereeing when I started over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. I have learned throughout the years, and that comes with experience, right. how to uh, protect the fighter, maybe stop the fights a little sooner right. now than what I would 30 years ago. 
And now we go and call into the corners more often. We call in the ringside doctor to evaluate the fighters. And why do we do that, Kenny? Because we want to make sure that the fighter is, is, is able to continue. We don't want a fighter to go right back out there after he's taken quite a bit of punishment to continue taking punishment. And Joe, you made a good point. Uh, and it's not only in boxing, it's in every sport. If you look at football 30 years ago and you look at basketball 30 years ago, they have changed the sport for the safety of the athlete. Exactly. The athletes need to have longevity in what they love to do. And they don't need to just get beat up so that they're finished in just a few years. They need that, that their career extended so that they can make the best of it. Great, great, that's great. Now, fans, I want you to know that tonight we're going to do something a little different. We're going to have, answer some questions that you guys have been asking us. So we're going to give you those answers shortly after this break. We're going to go with Nick, who's our, our reporter out on the field and has news that has been occurring the last couple of days, big fights that are coming up. So let's go to Nick, and then we'll come back with some answers that you've been asking us for a while.